<laughs> it is extremely, extremely slow. Um, the cool thing though is once it does start up, the games load and play at a normal rate. Um, we don't have nearly as many games on it because we put a handful of games on it, play those games, and if we want to play other games, we'll remove those games and put the other group on just so that it's easier to go through. Um, instead of having the menus up at up the top, it's set up this way where you can arrow over. You arrow over, buddy. This way? Either way. Yep, keep going. Um, it does have two games built in. One is Cave Story. Go over again. The other is Doom. Um, keep going. It's not like me. Okay. Perfect for a presentation. Um, it, oh, there it goes. Then we have Zelda. And I'll get off of my book. Uh, Crystalis. My favorite NES game ever. If anyone's ever played it. Um, the cool thing about it is, load a game, Jake. I don't know how to. Pick a game. Hold on. I'll go back. Uh, Mario Brothers. Those Mario Brothers. Yeah, go down. <laughs> down one. There. Um, so when you Yay. select a game, um, one of the issues you have is this loads the ROM just like it were on a cartridge. Back in the NES okay. days, you had it easy. When you want to play a different game, you pulled out the cartridge from the new one. Yeah. Um, on the computer, you have escape keys to get out of it. But on the RetroPie, oh. oh. you don't really have any escape keys. So it has it built in where you can push start and select at the same time. Yeah. And that is equivalent to uh, exit out of this ROM and take me back to the menu so I can select a different one. Um, it has a text file where you can select whichever um, key mappings you want. So you can, if you have more, like a PS controller, you can set up key mappings and then way to accomplish different things. And it has two player, it has one um, player. Can't be free, player. But you just SSH it, SSH into it to change the key mapping. Um, you, you can SSH into it. What I typically do is I just pop the SD card into yeah, my laptop and then edit the file, edit the file directly. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's easier than SSHing um, and it's a lot quicker, especially when I want to copy new ROMs uh, to this uh, system. I I'll have to do it over the network. Yeah. Oh no, I'm doomed! Um, <laughs> and because the hard drive is just an SD card, you can easily pull it out, pop it into the computer leaving everything set up and ready to go. I can't get out. It's not um, so anything. one of the glitches we have with this, um, which comes down to fixing the key mapping, I can't get out. is we have it set up for two players, so it's configured for two remotes. For some reason, player one remote is different in a game versus out of a game. So this is player one remote when you're out of the game, so you can go through and select which game to play. Too. But once you actually start playing the game, it switches to the other remote being player one. I want out. So that's why he's having trouble accessing it right now, is we only have the one remote plugged in. And so it sees this as player two. Um, and then the other issue we have is, I'm not sure if this is Raspberry Pi in general, but the USB yeah. controllers are read during boot up only. How do you so that? now that the controllers have been pulled out, plugging them back in, they don't work at all now. So we wow. actually have to power it off and power it back on to get it to work again. Let's do it! <laughs> <laughs> you can hard reset it without any uh, problems corrupting data. Uh, so there is no power button for this. There is no way to shut it down. The recommended way is to literally pull the power. Yeah! We um, pull it! If you're running a, a desktop like Raspbian, then you can just shut it down like a yeah. normal desktop. Um, a lot of the images well, for them right now, right? are not made for to be shut down, really. Right. Um, like the open for, or one. the XBMC stuff, so, uh, it doesn't have a shutdown, per uh, shutdown procedure. It does? Yeah, I was going to say. I don't like the food now. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
I'm shutting my down properly then. Um, this RetroPie doesn't have anything that I've seen. Um, all of my Raspberry Pi images, I've well, just pulled the power on because really I'm impatient. And I haven't had any issues with corrupt data or anything up to this point. So this is a very rookie question. I, I never played any of these uh, games. I really don't know the gaming world, and I try to stay away from it. Will this sort of present a challenge to the, these big players like Nintendos and whatnot? Do you guys no, see like, so, the game changes because of this? No, so the purpose oh, no. of this, um, this whole platform is based off the main application. Uh, main. I don't know what it means. Yeah. It's for arcade. Um, yeah, yeah, basically, they made a program so that they can take the old arcade games and be able to play them on modern hardware. So they don't come out with their own games. Um, MAME itself doesn't release any games. They just provide a emulator hey, to be able to play the games that other people make. Um, there are some legality issues around it. Um, I'm not sure what the overall ruling on that is. The last I heard is you have to actually own the name to be able to put it on the Raspberry Pi and be legal. Um, if you just download it off the internet and put it on the Raspberry Pi, it's te technically piracy. Uh, that's a separate day. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to pass around a couple just so you guys can see them, okay? Go ahead. If anybody needs power, we've got power that I can strong cord. You want electric power? And we have the Wi-Fi thing. Uh, as soon as Tony gets done, it's a little sheet of paper with some numbers on it. So if you need Wi-Fi, you take the top number, and that's your ID, and then the number below that is the pin, and cross it off when you're done. So we don't use the same one twice. I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, and one of the other uh, things you need to figure out with these is with like Super Mario Brothers, it's or Super Mario Brothers three, you can actually save your game. Um, when you exit out of the game, you have to exit out so that it saves the state of the ROM. Otherwise, you won't ever be able to actually save your game. Um, which is fine for like arcade type games where yeah. you don't have a need to save it. Uh -oh. Sorry. Um, but some Zelda. games like Zelda, where you can actually have a save point, oh, you need to be able to save the ROM. Um, start select at the same time the key mapping was set up where it does save it. I can't remember if I set Wait, that up or if it's done by default. <laughs> So, I used to do that. Oh, I lost light. What's in there? And even for the uh, wonderful NES graphics, on a HDMI connection, it still looks kind of cool. <laughs> I want to destroy that. Oh. Any questions? I have a quick question. I'm kind of a Raspberry Pi movie, so the Retro Pi differs from like your standard oh no, Raspberry Pi. Oh, so, uh -oh. the Raspberry Pi is... Yeah. The hardware. Yeah, so this, you, you have something that, like, that a piece guy. of hardware that's built onto it. Does it have other, like, an OS or something else? That's yeah, so the RetroPie is the OS that's put onto the part. Oh, I see, I see, okay. This is 100% a Raspberry Pi. Oh, so it's just yeah. the, Just with a OS called RetroPie. I see. And then you can load pre-existing games. Could you program you. your own games? And then... It won't work again. How come it's not working? I assume so. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't know how. I don't know. It, it would have to be in the ROM format. Okay. So if you know how to program an NES game or a Super NES game, okay. or anything like that, then yeah, you could. Yeah. Um, but it's not really made for programming games. It's just. Uh, I didn't know that. Some older yeah. Games on it. Yeah. So there, there. Just to mention too, there's some other clubs in the area. Um, one of the clubs, MUG, M U G dot org. Uh, they had uh, a guy come in, uh, one of the, the board uh -huh. members, and he described how you can, you know, write games with open source and things like that. Mm -hmm. So you have the full open source kind of environment on this box. So if you want to do programming and write code for games and things, you're not limited to the games that are on this 
this particular device that he's showing you right now, mm -hmm. there's you know hundreds of other options out there. So that was MUG, uh, M-U-G.org. There's also SEMCO, S-E-M-C-O dot org. That's a local club, and they're more orientated toward, you know, so they have some stuff for beginners and, you know, windows and stuff like that. Uh, so it's a, another good place to, to look for the things going on. Um, so, you know, programming, if you want to teach kids how to do programming and stuff like that, there's lots of people around here interested in that type of thing. Just kind of a beginner question. So if you get one of these and they're, what, like $45 or something? Uh, 35 I think. 35 yeah. Okay, and then you get it, and then it comes with a little, does it come with an SD card with an operating system? Okay, so the ones that are being handed around, if you, if you took a look at that real quick, yeah. Right, so you, 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 can, you can buy an SD card separately on the internet, okay. or buy one at one of your local hardware you know, places. And Micro Center is one that a lot of us favor, right? Uh, so the SD card is very cheap, right? You get a 4 gig one for, they probably don't even sell 4 gig anymore, so, so it's small. Um, and then you put all kinds of USB things in there. So I've got a USB keyboard, right? So this is a... Um, it's USB and it's it's wireless and it's solar powered, so it's really portable and easy to move around. And then I have like a, a Wi-Fi dongle on there. I've also put in a low energy. Uh, uh, oh, what is that? Uh, what's that thing to connect? Uh, Bluetooth. Bluetooth low energy, right? So you can control things with, with that. Uh, just all kinds of USB type thing, and I can get into more on that, but. Just to answer that, you asked another question about what kinds of things do people do with these, and yeah. we can go through that. I mean, I, I want to give everybody a chance to talk rather than me talking all the time. I bought uh, my SD card last night. Uh, it was recommended that it be like a 10. Yes. So that's the speed, how quickly it can respond. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, like, they use that in video cameras. Okay, got it. Yeah. Yeah, and there's some light. How much of the uh, the uh, operating system that's kind of built with that is really close to Linux in, in terms of what you can do? In other words, if I wanted to play music, for example, if I wanted to do all those kind of Perl, program something in Perl. Or